place, God. Touch every seat. Touch every person in the room, God. God, we are filled with expectation that this Christmas season is going to be something new. That it is not just going to be about the gifts. That this is not just going to be about, oh, what is this person getting me or what is that person getting me? But this is going to be about the gift that you've given us all. And that is your son, Jesus Christ. God, we thank you. We worship and adore you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we know that God knows our name. He knows our name. Oh, you know my name. You know my name. You know my name. Oh, you know.
because the world, the world forget about us. You may be seated. I'm going to tell you, growing up, you know, I, I, I grew up, my mother and my father, they, they took care of me. They raised me as a, uh, as a good child. But when you get older and you're teenage and, you know, you think that you start smelling yourself. <laughs> you get out there and you be thinking that, uh, you know, my homeboys, my homegirls, you know, they, they love me. They, 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 they have, they take care of me. Forget about all of the things that your parents have done for you. But let me tell you one thing. The streets do not love you back. I have learned that, y'all. Yeah. The streets do not, your friends sometimes do not love you back. Well. Your friends sometimes, the world well. do not love you back. But I'm going to tell you someone who does. Well, yeah. say it, Deacon. Your God. Yeah. He loves you no matter who you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. No matter what mistakes you have made in life. Your God, he knows your name. I don't care where you at in life. Your God knows your name. He knows everything about you. He knows your strengths. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your doubts. He knows your fears. He knows your struggles. He knows your challenges. He knows your cries. He knows everything about you. Oh, how you walk with me. I needed to hear that this morning. Because sometimes, sometimes I don't care how much you, how much we call ourselves Christians. Sometimes we get down on ourselves. Sometimes it feel like our back is up against the wall. Sometimes we don't know which way to turn. But I thank God that he has a house that I can come into. That I can fellowship with other believers. That I can feel that encouragement. That I can hear him speak to me even before the word comes forth from the pulpit. I know your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know your name. Good morning, Empower Ministries. Good morning. Good morning to the men of God. Woo! Good morning to the women of God. Yeah. Good morning to the children of God. And good morning to the people of God. This is a good day. This is cold out there. It is cold <laughs> out there. But this is still a good day. Yeah. Why? Because he woke me up this morning. It could have been an alternative that I didn't wake up. It could have been an alternative that I didn't get out of the bed. It could have been an alternative that something had gone wrong in my life that I could not leave home. But God woke me up this morning. So today is a good day. The day is filled with new grace and new mercy. The day is filled with another chance. God gave me another chance by waking me up this morning. So today is a good day. Well, we have some announcements. We have some announcements. Don't forget to tune in to us Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live as we continue our discipleship journey. How many of you have been enjoying this journey? Raise your hands. We've been having a great, great time every Wednesday at 7 p.m. as we learn how to live the Word of God on our discipleship journey. Then don't forget, this coming Tuesday is Given Tuesday. This is worldwide. It is Given Tuesday. We ask all members, all members to send out a text. Pick up the phone, do, stop by the house, do whatever you have to do to let them know that this Tuesday we ask asking all members to uh, speak to your friends, your cousins, your family members to donate $10. This is going to be 10 for 10 for the members. 10 for 10. Get 10 people to donate $10. Just $10 to your church. Amen? Amen. To your church. You can give them the of uh, the, uh, the electronic um, ways that we give through cash app or or um, sell or if they want to give you the funds have them give you the funds but if they give electronically let them know to put in the subject that this is given Tuesday mm -hmm. 
given to. Do we want them to put their names on there, Pastor? You, if you want, you can tell them to put the name on there, given to Z and Jeanette. <laughs> there you go. Given to Z and Jeanette. That way, you know, we can keep account of how many uh, persons the Anjanette group have given to God. Amen? Amen. 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 So given Tuesday, that's this coming Tuesday, we ask an infantin. Every mom is to get 10 people to give $10. Just $10. You know how small $10 is? Mm -hmm. That ain't much. $10. $10 can't make you all break you. Amen? And if you can't get 10 people, then you get, you give 10. Times 10. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Watch night. Watch night service is December the 31st. Uh, that's New Year's Eve. We're going to meet here like we do every year at 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. Watch night service. Um, that's going to be uh, December the 31st. We ask everybody to make attendance as we close out 2024. Amen. And then we have our prayer line. Prayer call is going to start 2025. It's going to start January the 28th at 7 p.m. For those of you who need special prayer, you can let us know that you need special prayer. And you can dial in the number. And we want to once again continue to repeat this number. Um, if you want to write it down, you can write it down. The number is 605-313. 5772. Okay? Y'all see how I did that? Do you notice? And I work, you know, for a company and, you know, I'll be asking persons for their numbers so I can, you know, confirm and everything. People say, 605 313 5772. I don't know if you ever noticed that when you ask somebody their phone number, see, they know it. They know it, so they say, what's your number? 605 313 you be like, wait a minute, you say this? I don't know if it's me, maybe because I got older. I don't know, maybe when I was a kid, younger, I can get it, I can, you know. But I'm a little older than that, so I need you to break it down. Break it down into three parts. 605. Three, wait a hold on. 605, that's what I do sometimes. 605, hold on, wait a minute. 605-313-5772. Okay, I got it. And the access code is 739-8491. And we're going to continue to uh, repeat those numbers next uh, week. If you want to break up or write it down or write it in your phone, you can do that. Let's go over our motto. Let's go over our motto. I am who God says I am. I am who God says I am. I can do what God has called me to do. I can do what God has called me to do. I'll go where God sends me. I'll go where God sends me. Because I'm empowered. Because I'm empowered. To make a difference. To make a difference. Amen, amen. It's time to give. Well, it's time to give. There's a couple ways that you can give. You can give through Cash App. That's Dollar Sign Empower Ministries. You can give through Zelle. That's giving.empowermentistries at gmail.com. Let me say that again for those of you on social media. That's, uh, you can give through Cash App. That's dollar sign. Empower Ministries. You can give through Zell. That's giving.empowermentistries at gmail.com. If you're in the building, need an envelope, you can just raise your hand. Stephen Ashley is giving out the envelope. The word of God tells us, bring the whole tie to the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Tax me in this, says the Lord Almighty. See if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven, pour out so much blessings, that there will not be room enough to store it. It's time to give. It can't be God-given. can't be God-given. And if you don't have the funds to give, always just give yourself to God. Amen. Amen. Give yourself to God. Sacrifice yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Let's pray over the ties of the offering. Father God, this is in the name of Jesus. God, we just thank you, God, for this opportunity to give back a portion of what you have given to us. Now we ask that you bless the ties, bless the offerings, use them, God, 
as we continue to do your work here on earth. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Together we all say amen. amen. You may receive the gifts of the people. I tell you, y'all, praise team, they've been sounding so good. They've been sounding so good. One of these days, I'm going to get up here, and I'm going to be with them. I can't sing, y'all. I do the Kirk Franklin on y'all. I do the Kirk Franklin. I just be saying the words. I just be saying the words and doing my little step, my little, you know, my little two-step, you know. But I'm going to get up here one day with them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.
generations Oh, oh the generations oh, 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 oh May His favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children that children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you for a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor
sisters, this is for your family, this is for your children, this is for their children, and their children, and their children, a thousand generations, a thousand, may his favor be upon you for a thousand generations, in your family, in your children, in their children, their children, may his favor be upon you for a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children, may his favor be upon you for a thousand
need you to get there. Because we say it so easily, Sister Anjanette. But I needed to get down into somebody's spirit. That God is not a man that he would lie. What does that mean? It means that you and I tell lies. Hello. It means you and I tell lies. I don't lie. Yes, you do. Pastor has lied. The congregation has lied. Mother Linda has lied. The little bitty children, you know they tell lies. I didn't do it. <laughs> person who is of flesh and blood has lied at least once. Then that doesn't mean every lie was a bad lie. Sometimes you tried to surprise somebody for birthday party. So you couldn't tell them the full truth because it was a good surprise. But, yeah, but God is not a man that he tells a lie of any sort. Whether maliciously, whether for good intent. Because you want to surprise somebody with a party or a gift. He's not a man. Lying, he can't speak. If God attempted to lie, it would have to turn to the truth. Because everything he speaks got to come to pass. Because his word cannot be turned to him void. So as soon as it leaves his lips, it's already manifested. So you and I can look at the school, the sky and say the sky is blue. But if God says the sky is yellow, then before we can blink our eyes, yellow will start forming in the sky. Because God's word cannot be turned to him Boy. And so the moment we say amen, we just put God's stamp of approval on that thing and said that it shall come to pass. So I need you just to think about the thing that the last thing that you had on your mind, that last thing that you prayed about, that last thing that you gave to God, that last thing that you put before him, that last thing that you had in your devotion time. I need you to put it in the forefront of your mind. And with every strength you have, I need you to now declare amen. Amen. Because it is so. Amen. It shall happen for you. Amen. You will get the thing you're seeking. Amen. You will be released. Amen. It will happen. Amen. Overflow is coming. Amen. It will be mended. Amen. It will be healed. Amen. 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 Come on, let's thank God for the praise team. And how they ushered us into God's presence this morning. I thank God for each and every one of you. Welcome to the last communion service of 2024. Can y'all believe that we are winding down another year? We are closing out another year, another year. But guess what, y'all? I need you to tell at least one person, I made it to the end. Made it to the end. I made it to the 12th month of the year, and I plan to continue my journey. Amen. 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 There's a word from the Lord. I tell you, the enemy is busy. When he knows you're about to say something that's going to disrupt his peace, he gets busy. How do I know? Because first, he knocked out the internet. We said, okay, no problem. We'll use the iPhone for hotspot. But then, the system, the platform, because everything is on that one phone hotspot, it started making it move too slow. So we said, nope, got to disconnect everything and just use the phone itself. Like we did, hey, we ain't new to this. Yeah. Then we forgot, we did this. We done been around this Mario go around before. So just because he interrupted that, doesn't mean that he want to stop God's word from going forth. Amen. But then Mother Living, he said, okay, you think you miss smarty pants. Well, okay, so you got it on, the, you got it on Facebook Live. Y'all streaming, y'all good. Well, guess what? Try to preach without your word. Because I looked at tablet, God did. I'm like, okay, well, you know what? Guess what? I done spent time with the word. I done ate the word. I done swallowed the word. I done breathed the word. And guess what? I write my notes in the word. And when I write my notes in the word, I can reflect back on the time that I spent with God. And guess what? The God's word will still come back in truth. Uh, because we already said his word cannot return to him void. So the moment that I speak what word says, then guess what? Amen. It's not to come to pass. Uh, so the enemy doesn't win. And guess what? I'm just going to jump right to it. Guess what the title is today? Your breakthrough is in the house. Uh, he forgot. He didn't realize that when we showed up, that victory was showing up with us. When we showed up, breakthrough 
because he didn't know what all men meant. Uh, but we got we got something for him today. So I'm glad he showed up because guess what? The enemy is in my text today. So I need him to hear me talk about him. Uh, so I'm so glad he showed up because we're about to put him in his place. Uh, and we want to read the word of God today. The word of God comes in the gospel of Luke, the gospel of Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 31. The gospel of Luke chapter 4. Beginning at verse 31. I tell you, don't be scared to write in your Bibles, y'all. Don't be scared. Don't listen to them super duper holy folk. Don't write in the Bible. It's sacred. Don't mess up the paper. You better write in that Bible. It's a book of God's word. And God wants you to connect with it day and night. Writing in it is not going to damn you to hell. Writing in it will keep things fresh in your mind. When God gives you revelation. And when something speaks to you, write it right then and there. Because when you try to recall it, you may forget. But the moment you open it, you're like, oh man, I remember that. And you get to see what you put on there. And guess what? Deacon Ashley, it also shows the journey of your growth. It helps you to see where you were at the time you first read it to where you are now. So let me tell you, my book is filled with writings. I have circles, I have arrows, I have everything. Sometimes I write too small and I can't read my Because <laughs> I'm trying to get it all in. But it is, it is okay, it is okay to write in the book. Amen. The Gospel of Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 31. It's only four short little verses, beginning at verse 31. And the word of God says, Then he, he meaning Jesus, then he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath he taught the people. They were amazed at his teaching because his words had authority. Somebody say authority. Authority. In the synagogue, someone say synagogue. synagogue. That's the church, young people. When you hear the word synagogue in the Bible, they talk about the church. In the synagogue, in the church, there was a man possessed by a demon. An impure spirit. He cried out at the top of his voice, Go away! That's what he said. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And now this is Jesus talking. Be quiet! Jesus says sternly, Come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before them all and came out without injuring him. He said, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus told him, be quiet. Come out of him. And guess what? The demon did just that. He came out of the man, and he left him without injury. By the time we are together, I'm going to continue with the title I already gave you. Your breakthrough is in the house. God, we thank you for how you've already showed up. We thank you for how you're already touching, healing, and speaking. Now, God, continue to have your way on this last communion Sunday. God, sit Reverend Mo down and stand up within me that all of us will hear a word from one high. God, break the chains and set the captives free, Lord God. Let nobody leave in the same mindset or condition they came. If they came heavy, let them leave feeling a little bit lighter. If they came discouraged, let them leave feeling a little bit more encouraged. If they came came in feeling heartbroken and broken down. God, let them leave feeling empowered and strengthened. Lord God, knowing that they've had an encounter with you. God, we thank you. We thank you because you've already been good, but we also thank you because you're still doing good, despite of us not being good. God, you are a good God, and we thank you for all that you are, all that you do, and all that you're continuing to do. It's in Jesus' name every believer say amen. Amen. You may be seated. In the 
the synagogue. The synagogue is the church. In the synagogue, inside the church building, in the place where the worshipers dwell, in the place where the worshipers come to commune, in the place where the worshipers come to hear a positive word, in the place where the praise team lift up the name of Jesus, in the place, in this place that we call God's house, Pop Williams, is in that place, in the synagogue, is where a man possessed by a demon was found. And so, I'm talking today about your breakthrough being in the house. We shared last week, we shared last week that we have now entered, as a matter of fact, today is the official first day of Advent. <coughs> this is the season of Advent. This is the season where we are preparing for the arrival of Jesus. Uh, so many people uh, disagree on when his day of birth is. Some people say it wasn't Christmas, it was this time, it was that time. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care when it is. I just want to celebrate him. I just want to celebrate the fact that he arrived. Uh, because of his arrival, I'm able to be saved. Because of his arrival, my sins are forgiven. Because of his arrival, I now have access to eternal life. It, I don't get into quarrels about exact date. It does not matter. I could care less the exact date. As long as I know before the 12 months is over, I need to celebrate the birth of my Savior. Because if it wasn't for his birth, then I would be condemned to death. Hello. If it wasn't for his birth, we would be condemned to death. And so we are now celebrating this Advent season, thanking God for his birth that is coming up, his, the four weeks leading up to the Christmas celebration. Yes, we decorate with ornaments, and no, that's not about the birthday, but guess what? At birthdays, you have a party. Yeah. And so my ornaments represent the fact that I'm celebrating the party. No, the tree does not represent his birth, but guess what? I like plants, and I'm sure he does too. And so I'm going to have a tree in honor of him. No, the twinkling lights are not the, the sign of his birth. It doesn't have anything to do with his birth. But guess what? His mama and his daddy followed the star of where the birth was supposed to take place. So I want to have some twinkling lights to represent the star. Don't get caught up on the tangibles. Just make sure you celebrate the birth. Yeah. And so we're in this season where we're celebrating the birth. And now that he has arrived in the scene of our text, what I love about this text right here, uh, Sister Bree, is that this is immediately following after he was tested in the wilderness. After he was tested in the wilderness. And then here it is. He was tested in the wilderness. He had to fight his way through with the tricks of the enemy for 40 days and 40 nights. And then the next group of uh, texts, from verses 14 through 30, he is now being rejected in his own hometown of Nazareth. Ah, it's, it's something that when you come out of a test, when you come out of a tough season, sometimes you go to look for the people who know you best to give you encouragement, and they're the very ones who will reject you. They're the very ones who will turn their backs to you. Uh, why is that, Brother Jerome? Sometimes it's because they remember the old us, and they can't see beyond the old us. They can't see how God has changed us. They can't see how God has fixed us up. They can't see how God has changed our language. They can't see how God has ordered our steps. But that's okay. You continue to walk in the way that God has you walking and let them see the change for themselves. Sometimes you can't verbalize it. Sometimes you can't talk it out. Sometimes you just got to demonstrate by just showing them that the Lord is on your side. Sometimes you just got to walk the walk instead of trying to talk it. Sometimes you just got to show them this is what life can be like when you tell God yes. And so he wasn't accepted into his own hometown. He wasn't accepted in Nazareth. He was not accepted. But he also says in there, he says, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. He says that in verse 24, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. <sighs> Somebody missed that, Deacon David. Let me say that again. Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. Mother Lemon, they still didn't get it. Let me try it one more time. Truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted. Uh huh. Courtland, I, I think they're they trying to get a little bit. I'm going to say it one more time. Truly, I tell you, no. So that means if you're not accepted, they see you as a. If they're not saying that you are welcome into their circle, it's because they see you as a. Uh huh. So that means every time you speak something out of your mouth, God's manifestation is following your words because they see you as a prophet. as a prophet. Because no 
Churches recognize the Sabbath on Saturday. For them, it's Saturday morning. Whichever day, I don't care if you recognize it on Tuesday morning. Just pick a day and let that day be about the Sabbath. What is a Sabbath? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Y'all so smart this morning. So the Sabbath is the day that you dedicate for God. That's the day you dedicate to God. That's the day that, God, I give you my attention. God, I give you my time. God, I serve you on this day. God, I praise you on this day. God, I receive your word on this day. God, I dedicate me on this day to you. That is a day you dedicate to God. That's what this, That's all the Sabbath is. It's a holy day that we should always remember, that we should always honor, and that we should always give it to God. Do not get into religious debate about about when it is on a human calendar. It really supposed to be Saturday. It really supposed to be Sunday. Did you worship God? I don't care if you did it on Saturday or Sunday. Did you honor a Sabbath? Did you give God your time? Did you give God your worship? Did you give God your prayer? Did you honor the Sabbath? And so he said he came on a Sabbath. The Sabbath is the day that you set aside to give God the honor in his house. And so they were in God's house on the Sabbath, and he was teaching, and they were all amazed. And while he was teaching, the text says that in the synagogue there was a man possessed by a demon. Now right there, you already know that your breakthrough is in the house. How do you know? Because when you are in the house, the enemy shows up too. Uh -huh. that, that's how you know that's where your breakthrough is. Why? Because the enemy is going to show up where you are so your breakthrough don't break through. Uh huh. The enemy shows up when in the house because he doesn't want your breakthrough to show up because he wants to disrupt your praise. He wants to disrupt your worship. He wants to take you off focus. He wants you to be disturbed by your phone going off and not focus on the word of God. He wants you to continue thinking about that thing that bothered you last night instead of just homing in on the preached word that's happening this morning. Uh, that's what happens. The enemy showed up and it says he showed up. Here it is in the church. Hello. In the church. We wonder why, Sister today so many people walk away with church hurt. The enemy was there. We wonder why so many people leave a church. The enemy was there. It doesn't have anything with the church itself. Because every church got issues. Because every church was ran by a human being. And there is no perfection in humanity. So you're going to find something somewhere. But God is saying, still go to the church. <laughs> because your breakthrough is in the church. Because though the enemy showed up, guess who else showed up? The Lord showed up too. <laughs> the Lord said, this is my house, so I'm going to show up. This is my place, so I'm going to show up. This is my dwelling, so I'm going to show up. The enemy can come on, and guess what? When the enemy comes, he just may get converted too. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall come. Church. Now he's singing and praising. 
through scriptures. Now he know how to say the name of Jesus. Now he's speaking in tongues. I'm trying to approach over there. I'm going to see what I'm going to see what I'm going to see. Now he's doing all this stuff. Why he done, she done joined the ushers? Why is she up here singing on a praise team? He's serving as security? Where did all of this happen? The moment I showed up in church. The moment I showed up to give God my yes. The moment I showed up and sat among the people. That's the moment that my breakthrough started to unfold. And so, the first thing we need to do is show up. Yeah. That, that's the first lesson. That's the first lesson, uh, Cortland. Is that your breakthrough is in the house. But before you can get it, you got to actually be in the house. Uh, your breakthrough is here waiting for you, Mother Living. But before you can receive it, you got to show up to get it. Your breakthrough is sitting right here for you to get Deacon David. But before God can just hand it to you, you got to show up for him to hand it to you. Yeah. Tell somebody to show up. Show up. Uh -huh. show up. Show up. When I'm tired, I still show up. When I don't feel like it, I still show up. When I don't feel my best, I still show up. When I'm not that, no, I'm not happy that day, I still show up. When I've been crying all night, I still show up. With my aches and pains, I still show up. With my problems still on my shoulder, I still show up. When money is funny, I still show up. When I'm driving on E, I still show up. When I have nothing to wear, I still show up. When I can't do my hair, I put on some gel or ponytail and still show up. Show up. God, no matter what it looks like, I'm still going to show up. Why? Because every time I needed God, God showed up for me. Every time I cried to God, God showed up for me. Every time I thought I didn't have enough food, God showed up for me. Every time I didn't see money to pay a bill, God showed up for me. Every time I wasn't sure where I was going to lay my head, God showed up for me. Every time I thought I was going to go crazy, God showed up for me. And so if I rely on God showing up for me then at least once a week I'm going to show up for God yeah. tell somebody just show, up. Just, show up. just show up just show up that's the first thing but then here's the second thing here's the second thing when you come into the house to get your breakthrough here's the second thing and I borrow this I'm so sorry Will Smith uh, because it just kind of messed you up a little bit I think you just used it in the wrong time the wrong uh, audience the wrong thing but now you can use it here so don't worry about it I got your back but when you show up in the church the other way you get your breakthrough you gotta look at the enemy and tell the enemy keep my name out your mouth uh huh keep 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 my name out your mouth. Uh, how, how do you know that? Because right here in our text, it says right here, the enemy told Jesus, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And immediately Jesus told him to be quiet. He told him to be quiet because sometimes you got to look your enemy in the face and tell them, keep, your, keep my name out your mouth. You don't have the privilege to speak my name. You don't have the authority to speak my name. Because here it is, Sister Brienne, when the enemy speaks your name, what the enemy is saying is that I control you. He said, I know you better than you know yourself. I know all your secrets. I know your dark thoughts. And so every time you allow the enemy to speak your name, he's reminding you of who you are used to be, how you used to act, the crowd you used to roll with, but baby, this is the season that before 2024 ends, you and I need to step fat-footed and pigeon-toed and look that devil dead in the eye and tell him from now on, you are not allowed to speak my name, take my name out of your mouth, because you don't have authority over me, you don't have authority in Jesus knew the first thing he had to do was silence the devil. Because he knew that if the devil can convince you of who he says you are, then he has control of your future. Because now he will tell you the direction you should go. Don't go over there because it's not going to work out for you. Don't do that because you're not going to get approved. Don't try to go for that because you're not qualified enough. The devil is a liar. Yeah, yeah. Who says I'm not qualified? Who says I can't have it? I can have anything God tells me I can have. If God says I can have a house, I'm getting a house. I didn't say it was a 10-bedroom house. I don't care if you only got two bedrooms. It's still a house. Whatever God 
are sellers. Yeah. I can have. No, you can't. Your credit score is the lowest you can get on the credit score is 500, and yours is negative 120. Well, that just means I got work to do. But that don't mean I can't have it. I just can't have it today. But that doesn't mean I can't have it two years from now, three years from now, five years from now. All I got to do is trust the Lord with all my heart and lean back to my own understanding and all my ways acknowledge Him and know that He will direct my path. But first you gotta come into the house. And then when you recognize who the enemy is, you gotta shut him up. And tell him, take my name out your mouth. But here's the third thing, here's the third thing, sister today. The third thing that you know your breakthroughs in the house is because when you get there, when you get there, the breakthrough will not only release you, but it'll keep you whole. Yeah, that's a good one for me. Your breakthrough will not just release you, but it will keep you whole. What, what do you mean, Reverend Mo? That's that thing when you hear the churchy people say, you don't look like what you've been through. That, that's when you hear the people say, I done been through fire, but I don't smell like smoke. Because the moment it released you, it could not destroy you. The moment it released you, it could not break you. The moment it released you, it could not stop you. The moment it released you, it could not dumb you down. The moment it released you, it had to keep you whole. Because the moment that you declare in the name of Jesus, I shall have what God said is mine, it had to release you, but it could not harm you. The text says right here that it threw the man down and left him, came out of him without an injury. Tell somebody, I don't look like what I've been through. I have been through hell and high water. I have been through the valley and the flood, but I don't look like what I've been through. Why? Because when it released me, it could not destroy me. Come on and give God the praise that the But you are still whole. Ah, uh, the enemy thought he had Jesus the moment he got nailed to the cross. He thought he had him because he saw the clouds go dim. He saw darkness in the sky. And he just knew this was the end of the story. But what the enemy did not calculate is though you had me nailed to the situation, though you had me nailed to the circumstance, though you had me nailed to my problems, though you had me nailed to my pain, though you had me nailed to my heartache, though you had me nailed to it, there was going to be a Sunday morning when God was going to say, get up. And the thing that once had me had no choice but to let me go. <laughs> ah, it was nothing I did. No, Sister Tanea. It was nothing you did. It was nothing you did, uh, Sister Pree. It was nothing you did, Deacon, Deacon David. It was simply because you and I made a choice to show up in the house that God said I was waiting for you because I knew who was coming in with you. Uh, come on in. Come on in. You thought you had my son. Come on in. You thought you had my daughter. Come on in. And the moment you enter, the moment you put your problems, come in to them. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. The moment Sister Tanea came in, oh, she was crying. Come on, cry. <laughs> All right, the moment she came in, she was crying. And she bringing her problems to the altar. Take your problems to the altar. And the moment that she taking her problems to the altar, and the enemy's like, yeah, I got her. Come in, come in, Sister Bree. The enemy's like, yeah, I got her. I got it. She down now. Because remember, he showed up in the house too. He's like, I got it. I got it. That's the moment that Jesus stepped in, blocked the 
are about to have a birthday party celebration for the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We recognize it and celebrate it on the 25th of December. I'm cool with that. Whatever day you recognize it, just make sure you go all out because he deserves that much. Go all out and celebrate him. Give him all of your worship. Give him all of your praise. Because he's due all of that. One of the ways during this Advent season that we celebrate him is that we come to the table, the communion table. For he declares in his word as often as you do this. Do this in remembrance of me. This will be the 12th time that we've done this in 2024. We do communion once a month. It is always the first Sunday of the month. Why is it always the first Sunday? I'm going to tell you. Because the word of God says to give God the first 10%. And I'm a believer that it wasn't just about the money. Yes, God wants us to trust us with our finances, but he wants the first 10% of everything about us, including our time. And so we give God the first 10% of our time by giving him the first Sunday of the month. Because though we all want to live a long life, how many people want to live a long life? Your hand ain't raised. You tell me what color you want to you know. Y'all want to live a long life, okay. Well, you know. Some folks that I don't want to, you just tell me what color you want me to wear. And just give me a specific date. But most of us, if not all of us, want to live a long life. But it's no guarantee. So that's why the first Sunday we give to him. It's almost like the first Sunday is a reset. Like God, the last 30 days, eh, did it go well? Mm -hmm. Was it good for you? Mm -hmm. Were you good? Mm -hmm. Did you do? Mm -hmm. And so when the next month comes and we reach the first Sunday, all right, God, let me try this again. Let me reset and get refocused and try this again. That's what I love about God. He allows us to reset. That's what this communion table is all about. He knows that we haven't reached the level of perfection, but even in our brokenness, he allows us to come to the table so that we can reset. And so now as the deacons come to prepare the table, as they come to prepare the table, you at home on social media, you can come and prepare. You can now prepare your, your communion offerings. You can now prepare your communion offerings, those of you who are watching at home. You can use anything. Here we have communion cups for everyone. But you can use whatever you have in your house. Whether it be crackers, a piece of toast, a piece of bread, whether it be water, orange juice, a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, whatever it is that you have in your home, you may use it. Because this is simply a representation of the body and blood of Jesus. This is not his actual body, this is not his actual blood. This is simply a representation of the body of God. And so you are welcome to use whatever it is that you have in your house. And as you get that prepared, Minister Kim is going to come and pray over these elements. Trust and believing that the same power it had over 2,000 years ago has the same power today in 2024. Minister Kim. Lord, we come to you today to give you thanks. Lord, you have kept us. Lord, you have kept us. Lord, you have kept us for 12 months. God, where chaos and 
calamity is happening all around us, all around the world, God, you still have kept us. God, you continue to keep your promise. And so, God, we just want to lift up our praise and our worship today to say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for keeping us for 12 months. And God willing, God, we ask that you continue to keep us as we continue on this journey, God. Lord, we thank you for sacrificing your son or sending your son as a sacrifice. God, we thank you and we glorify your name. Jesus, we thank you for the shedding of your blood. We do this in commemoration of you. The shedding of your blood, the breaking and the brokenness of your body to save someone like me. Lord, we thank you in advance. We thank you for keeping us. We ask for your continued keeping. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Minister Kim. Amen. Amen. We're going to now have everyone follow the, the ushers. We're going to now have everyone follow the leader of the usher to come and get your communion cups. Communion is for all those who are who have given their life to Christ. For those who are saved by his grace. Those who believe in who he is are all welcome at his table. All who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior are welcome to God's table. He didn't say you had to be perfect to be welcome. He just said, come as you are. And just believe in who I am. Is there anybody in the back of this one? Amen. Amen. I love that our children come in for communion. And even though some of them haven't reached the age yet to for communion, I'm glad that they come into the sanctuary to be a part of the experience. And let me fix that. I'm not going to say they haven't reached an age for communion. Communion is at the age of anyone who's ready to confess Jesus is able to save them. Okay. So if you feel as though at the age of 10, at the age of 15, that you're ready to confess that Jesus is Lord and to give him your yes in your heart, you're ready to take communion. You're ready to be baptized, you're ready to take communion. There's no age requirement. I, I, don't, I don't get some of these places. <coughs> Since when? Jesus spoke to the young and the old. As a matter of fact, the young ones, here we go, I'm about to mess y'all up. The young ones are the real leaders. He said the children shall lead them. The young ones are the real leaders. Why? Because they still have a little more innocence in them. Amen. Amen. Let us go ahead and prepare. Thursday evening, we celebrate and recognize this Thursday during Passover Sunday, known as a Monday Thursday. Monday, M-U-N-D-A-Y, not Monday like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But Mun, M-U-N. It is the day that Jesus sat at the table with his disciples, those who trained with him, those who learned what by him, those who saw all of the demonstrations and miracles, the working miracles of Jesus. 
The ones that he said, greater things than these will you do. He traveled, they traveled with him for these three years, and now he's at the point of his journey that he must part ways. But this parting is not unto sorrow, but it's so that we could have life. And so he's here at Empowering Ministries, we sing about the power of the blood and how the blood still works. It will never lose its power. How many believe that this morning? That the blood still works. Yes, 2,000 years ago, they smeared it over the doorposts so that the death angel could pass. But guess what? Now the power of the blood works within me. So every time danger tries to take me out, death can't stop me. Because God says I'm not finished with him yet. I'm not finished with her yet. Uh, every time we take communion, that's us putting the blood of the lamb over top of us and through us. Because the power of the blood still has strength. Amen? Amen. 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 And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and who can release you and bless you all because you showed up in the house. To the only wise God, be all majesty, dominion, and power, now and forevermore. God bless you. See you Wednesday in discipleship. And if you didn't get a chance to sow a seed online, you can still do it now. Go ahead and sow a seed into the ministry works of this ministry. You can sow a seed at Cash App, Dollar Sign, Empowering Ministries, or sell giving.empowerministries at gmail.com. And if you don't get a chance to do it today, don't forget on Tuesday. Tuesday is the Nationwide Giving Tuesday. It's a global effort. And as a lot of people are looking for support, so is Empower Ministries. Make sure you pour into us so that we can continue to pour into the community and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Come on, praise team, and take us home.